Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another meetup with Romania Power BI and Modern Excel User Group. This is the August session, even though today it's uh, September 7th. This is the rescheduled uh, meeting from August. Thank you all for joining this uh, 11th meetup of the year and the 34th in total. And uh, thank you all for spending your time here with us when you could do anything else. Welcome to another Power BI session presented by a very, very special guest today, Brian Julius, Chief Content Officer at Enterprise DNA. Uh, thank you, Brian, again for accepting our invitation. And uh, let me tell you, I'm really, really happy to uh, finally have you presenting at ROPAG. I'm thrilled to be here. For our newest members, my name is uh, Christian Angel, and together with uh, the second Christian, Christian Prifti, we are the co-organizers of uh, Romania Power BI User Group. Our LinkedIn um, URLs are pretty similar. Only a P or an A are different here with the bit.ly. Please uh, follow us if you are interested more about uh, things uh, related to Power BI data analytics. And uh, most of all, please follow Brian and I will talk about it uh, a little bit later. Today's agenda, uh, it's really short. Uh, we are on the welcome and overview section now. I'll uh, shortly present you our future meetups, the ones that we know about. Then uh, Brian will, uh, will have his featured session. We'll have a Q&A in the end. After the Q&A, we have a raffle, an enterprise DNA raffle, and I will tell you more about it in uh, in a few minutes. And then uh, uh, the wrap up and uh, this is it for today. House rules during the meetups. Uh, please make sure that during Brian's presentation, your microphones are muted and your video is turned off. Uh, type your questions or comments in the chat area. Uh, prefix them with a queue so we can spot them easier. If you have any problems with the internet connection, please drop off and uh, join again. Teams is recording everything and uh, you can see the recording afterwards. Uh, this is the moment and the note for myself that uh, this meeting is recorded and will be published on our um, YouTube channel. And whoever doesn't want to appear on our YouTube channel, please drop off and uh, see the recording afterwards. In terms of uh, next meetup, uh, as most of you know, since June, we've started to meet twice a month, not only once, just like uh, until now. And uh, we have a Romanian track session. And in September, we'll actually have three meetups. This is the first one rescheduled from August, but on the 14th of September, we have Viorel Kazaku with a session in Romanian about advanced power query for business analysis. Then on the 28th of September, we have Victor Momo with a, a crazy session on Excel Dynamic Arrays. I saw uh, his session at Excel Summit and I did ask him, please come and present it to us. And he said, okay, but I'll need to uh, touch up a bit and uh, he'll do something even crazier. So please make sure if you know what Dynamic Arrays are, come and see some possibilities. If you don't know, come and see what's possible in Excel. Then on uh, October 3rd, we'll have again an English uh, session with um, MVP Ana Maria Bispe York uh, about improving tabular model by combining queries. Then the Romania session for October will be with Ioana Boariu presenting us how to um, get Power BI to the next level uh, with PowerShell. So if you are interested, make sure you are attending this one because Ioana is, I've seen some things done by Ioana which are really, really crazy. Then the November 16 meetup is still to be defined. I don't have all the details yet, but uh, it will be on November 16. And on November 29th, we have uh, Kurt Bueller, another MVP presenting. Uh, to be honest, I don't know exactly the final session because we had uh, some more options, but anything Kurt is presenting, just like Brian, is worthwhile 
and uh, I really encourage you to come and uh, see all of our sessions because all of our uh, speakers are just great. Whoever is new to our user group can see all our past recordings on our YouTube channel. Uh, just go to bit.ly slash ropag underscore history. You have uh, most of our sessions, 95% of our sessions are recorded just like this one. And uh, if you go and check the playlist with the ROPAG meetings, you will see some great names there where uh, this session goes to. So please make sure to subscribe and stay up to date with uh, the latest um, recordings. We are celebrating a great milestone today at this meetup. We are celebrating two years of partnership with Enterprise DNA and everything started on August 2021 on our seventh meetup, I think. And the, the entire idea came to life only because of Brian, who actually listened to our proposal and uh, uh, went for the and supported us to, to, to be actually the first user group in the world. Yeah. Did you know, Brian, we were the first ones. Yeah, you, uh, you guys in the Austin group were the uh, the very first very first big partnerships. Yeah, the then starting a kind of trend with other user groups, and uh, I, I've seen that uh, there are many more uh, user groups that are uh, sponsored by Enterprise DNA, offering lots of possibilities for further learning and uh, further improvement. Um, since the partnership, since two years. Uh, we had more than 60 members benefited and got access to the incredible enterprise DNA raffle. I just checked the numbers before the meetup, Brian, and there are more than 60 licenses offered, which is crazy in my Fantastic. view. And this is the time to say a big, big, big thank you to you, Brian, for your support and to Sam, who uh, agreed and uh, also sponsored the entire idea and uh, loved it. The, we are continuing the partnership and we again offer uh, Enterprise DNA. Actually, it's offering two memberships today. Whoever wants to be in the raffle where we are distributing these uh, uh, licenses, please scan the QR code uh, on the screen or go to one of the uh, links. So whoever wants to participate in the raffle, please scan the QR code or go to one of the links, the short links. Uh, don't worry, I will put the links in the chat during the session. It's a Microsoft form that needs to be filled out. Even if you don't want to participate in the raffle, please fill up the, the form and provide the feedback so we can improve our future meetups. And uh, in the end, we will run the raffle uh, when uh, uh, the Q&A is finished. Coming back to today's session. Thank you again, again, Brian, for taking the time to come to present to our user group. My pleasure. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. It's a, uh, as I told you, it is an honor for us to to have you here. Uh, and uh, others were also very happy to see you here. This is why we have a. Uh, it is a record participation to Ropag meetup uh, meet up today. For who doesn't know Brian, even though uh, I don't think there are many here who doesn't know Brian, he is the chief content officer at Enterprise DNA, a lifelong data geek, as he likes to, to say, with an incredible knowledge in all Power BI, Power Query, R, AI, data analysis, and data science in general. He is sharing lots of lots of information on all of the above on LinkedIn, so make sure you are following him. As far as I understood, there is a blog planned, but uh, he can either confirm or deny that. So let's see. And uh, he's the man that uh, I very much uh, look up to because in every interaction we have, I always, always learn something new. His many years of uh, experience in data management, general management in, in life in general, is really, really helpful for the entire community. And uh, we are so lucky to have him here showing us some possibilities that uh, we've never, or at least I've never thought there are a thing. Brian, a few words about you, about Enterprise DNA, and the stage is yours. 
Thank you so much, Christian. I, I really can't tell you how much I appreciate um, being here. Um, let me uh, let me share screen. Um, but I just I just really wanted to say thanks. Also, thanks to everybody who um, who came to the to the presentation last week um, and then found we were we were going to be rescheduled. Um, I want to just say we I had a, a major meltdown last week with my internet connection that took about four days to to resolve. So um, it's been a it's been a bit of a journey to get here, but I am thrilled to be here. Um, I just wanted to I wanted to say one thing that um, I still maintain a really tight relationship with Enterprise DNA, but I'm no longer the chief content officer. So um, about midsummer, um, I had some other opportunity to work on a, a project, actually a book project that I'm uh, I'm now doing with a number of co-authors. We'll be announcing that um, soon. So um, that's been that's been a big project, as you mentioned, kind of the blog project, um, and then working on some um, some other um, kind of ad hoc content with Enterprise DNA. So Sam and I still maintain a very very close relationship, but um, I've kind of taken on some other some other big projects that hopefully you'll be hearing about um, in detail soon. Really looking forward to see what's coming, and uh, I'm pretty sure. There's something good. And uh, as I said, I always learn something new from you. So <laughs> thank you. Chris, something new. Something new. So I really um this is this is probably this might be my very favorite thing about Power BI is the the integration with Python and R. And I know that um Python has been getting kind of a huge amount of play lately in terms of the integration with Excel. And um, I think that's fantastic. You know, it just it it kind of extends Excel out even beyond you know beyond its um, its already extensive capabilities. But this is something that Power BI has had for years now, and um, it is it is an absolutely breathtaking feature when you when you combine that, and then also recently with the the incorporation um, that you can do with ChatGPT. Particularly, um, what they were calling Code Interpreter is now um, Advanced Data Analysis. Um, it really just opens up an enormous range of things that Power BI, in my view, is wonderful for descriptive analysis. But really, when you get into inferential analysis, statistical analysis, forecasting, it's really quite difficult. And um, you know, there are some things. Um, that you can you can kind of twist Power BI to do if you really have the will, but it's so much easier when you um, when you kind of bring in the additional capabilities that um, we get from from R or Python. And the one thing I, I wanted to emphasize is in my background is I came to, to data from economics and econometrics, and so that field is very much an R oriented field. Um, I know kind of in the in the broader um, debate between Python and R, um, which I think is is largely overblown, but um, Python has definitely come out as the winner, I think, for general data analysis and use. That um, it's it's more it's more widely sought. It is also really become kind of the language of AI, and so while i am very much immersed in the in kind of the r culture and and environment everything i'm going to show you today is absolutely relevant for python and the the interesting thing about the the r and python integration is it's it's one word and i'll i'll show you this um this little clip that if you take away one thing from this um from this presentation it's this word Data set. The data set is the magic word. And data set is the thing that invokes all the magic in the integration. And it's such, it's such a brilliant implementation. It's such a simple way of doing it. And I wanted to, I wanted to start with a with a very small example. Um, and those of you who participate in the the Excel BI challenges will recognize these. And for those who are not familiar, um, Vijay Verma um, does an 
absolutely marvelous nightly challenge um, for it started off as Excel. It kind of extended to Power Query. We now have people doing Python, doing R. I've seen some Julia solutions, SQL solutions. You know, basically anything that you like to program in, you can throw it um, at these problems. And they're really, they're beautifully designed. And he, he's he's got a um, he's got a bit of a mischievous streak in the sense that he's always working in these kind of brilliant curveballs into the analysis in that you'll you'll look at this and you go oh, this is straightforward and and then as you work through the challenge you'll find there's a null row that drops out or there's there's this you know duplicates that materialize or you know the pivot does not work exactly as as planned. he's he's incredibly creative at setting these up in a way that you've really got to think through them carefully and this was one this was one a while back and I thought this was a perfect example of a really simple example where you could use the integration to basically fill in a gap that um, that Power Query and M don't have. So what what this one was was you were given a set of prime numbers and you had to list those prime numbers that when you reverse the digits would also be prime and. Um, that there's actually a name that, that what I'm learning through these challenges is that every kind of specialized set of numbers has its own. Goal was to find the emerps, and um, if we go into in the Power Query, I'll show you exactly how this how this works um, in a really in a really simple way. Um, so Ryan, while you are in uh, Power Query, could you please uh, zoom in from time to time? Yes, yes. Thank you. Definitely do that. OK, is much that better? better? Yeah, much better. Thank you. Um, and so what, what we've got here is this is the this is kind of the original problem. And so you were given these numbers and you had to figure out, OK, which of these are an emer that when you flip the, the digits are still prime? And what we've got here is the the source table, and then we go through and we add a a reverse, you just with a, a text reverse command, change the type, and now here is here's where all the magic happens. And what this does is in the in Power Query, you've got a transform menu. And then you've got the ability to run an R script or a Python script. And that's what this step is. And what this allows you to do is to step in and out of R or Python from right within Power Query and then back out to uh, back out to your script. And if I double click on this, what this shows is Kind of how simple this can be and kind of where the data set command comes in so the way this works and i think i can zoom in on this box too yeah this is the problem is that this box yeah. unfortunately doesn't have a scroll um yeah. so i hope you can you can see that um but basically all it's doing is it's calling a something called library primes and um in R, what you've got is you've got you've got really three components of of R, and I'll, I'll kind of backtrack for a moment. Um, that what you have is you have you have base R, which you have to you have to download and install. And base R is something that once you have it installed, you'll never really see or use. You know, you'll you'll not interact with directly again. The second thing you've got in in R is is something called R Studio. And R Studio is an incredible IDE that you can use, and it looks it looks intimidating. It's actually it's actually really quite quite straightforward, and it's it's the kind of thing that I wish I wish Power BI had something like this, where you've got you've got an editor, you've got a terminal, you've got your your global variables, you've got your files, you've got the ability to um, you know, I'll show you on, on this one. If I run this, um, it will. Yeah. In Power BI, we have tabular editor. And right. 
Right. And, and that's, and I use that, I use that as well. Um, but for the, for those who, who use tabulator, this kind of thing will be really familiar. And this is, this is really where you, you interact with R primarily. And then the, the, the last component of R is the thing called CRAN. And CRAN is, is kind of the online aggregation of all the work that goes on in, in R, in the R community. And you can see here that there's almost 20,000 active packages. Um, there's 37 million downloads last week. Um, you know, there, there are you know, almost 11,000 people maintaining. And this is only, these are only the packages that are basically approved through the CRAN process. That there are a whole bunch of other packages that individual developers will put on their on their GitHub repositories. And so when you when you add those in, that's probably about 30,000 packages in total. And the thing that's amazing about this is really any type of analysis that I've never the most complex kind of um, obscure analyses that I've ever done all have multiple packages that do those and usually do them in just a couple of steps. And so this is really where you'll be you'll be interacting primarily with with ours through our studio and then the the package libraries. And so so basically what on this if we go back to this this example. So basically what I did is when I when I was working through um, the M code script and I realized M doesn't have a, a function that determines whether or not a number is prime. And so I, I just searched online. There's a there's a library called primes, downloaded it. And then this is basically R, R has a lot of analogies to Power BI. And so packages are almost in some sense what I think of as um, external tools or custom visuals that you download them once and then you you kind of inst you kind of activate them through a script anytime you want to use that after you've installed it. So this is just calling that prime script. And then this is this is the step that links the um, the the Power Query script to the R script. And when I mentioned that word data set, what data set does is data set takes the the last step of the the, the power query um, process. So in this case, it would be the table that if we if we cancel this out for a sec, this change type table. So at this point, this data is now um, the the R integration views this data as data set. And so when we run this R script, all we have to do is basically feed that data set into, I just have a DF for data frame variable, just because I don't like typing data set over and over again. And then all we're doing here is saying, okay, take that data frame, add a column called is prime to it. And then in the is prime um, column, basically what I want you to do is to is to look at that that reverse those reverse digits and then see tell me if they're if they're prime or not just using a a, a true or false um you know binary structured variable and what that does is that then executes that script and you see it you'll see it kind of execute briefly up here And then you get this data frame out of it. And then you you are now back, when you hit this data frame, you are now back completely in Power Query. And so it's it's basically taken the change type, run it through the R script through the data set command, back out to a data frame. And now we can we can filter this um, to only the trues and then just remove the the columns. And there's our answer. So if we if we hadn't done that. The people in the challenge who were left only with the um, the Excel functions or the Power Query functions had to program something called the sieve of Arasthenes, and it's it's a or Aristhenes, and it's a um, 
it's an algorithm for for basically searching for whether a number is or is not prime. And so what this does is if you if you think about back to CRAN and those those 20,000 packages, every one of those packages probably has 50 functions built into that. And so you you now think about the fact that with this one data set command, you have now opened the door for a million new functions into in the Power BI and Power Query. And that that to me is is amazing. You know that, that basically what you've now done is you've you've basically extended the M language infinitely. And I'll show you just another another really quick one from another um, Excel BI challenge. And this one. This one was basically to you were given a um, a list of binary um, numbers and you had to convert those to decimal numbers. And again, you know, this is something that that M doesn't do inherently. And so what we did here is just separated the first digit for what the mult is called the multiplier to determine whether it's positive or negative. And then we we invoked in our script here. And again, this is just a you know this was actually a function, the the string to integer function that is native to the base R package. And so, in this case, we didn't even have to call a library. That all we did was basically just pull that data set command right into um, a calculation where we just basically took data set and then ran it through this um, string to integer function and. Then what we got was just the extraction of binaries to decimals. We just multiplied that by the by the sign change, cleaned the uh, cleaned the result, and there you go. And so, you know, in in literally one command, you've you've done something that again would be would be a fairly you know fairly significant programming effort in in M, and so that is that is really the heart of it and for for python it works exactly the same way that python calls data set into the first element of its of its script as well so i've got some other i've got some other examples i want to show but i wanted to to just kind of pause here and see um if there were any questions at this point because i'm not i don't when i'm sharing screen Excuse me, I don't see the chat. And so there are no to... questions. No there questions. is only okay. one comment from Pavel saying that the uh, identical approach works for Python. Cooperation Python with Power Query is very important. Iterations, erosion algorithms, um, ML, sky is the limit. So uh, as you said at the beginning, it's more or less the same thing. It depends on what you are used to or you, you prefer, R or Python. Exactly. And, you know, the, the one thing I also want to say is, you know, there, there's a lot of talk back and forth about, you know, is R better, is Python better? And I I just, I kind of find that whole discussion a little bit misguided because particularly it kind of reminds me of in the early days, the Mac versus PC. And, you know, when, when they were very different programs and or very different platforms and the file formats were different and everything, then it really mattered. But in the, at this point, you can actually run Python right in our studio. Um, that the um, a lot of the books, like I, I really want to highlight this. I don't know if you can see this this book by Lucas Zavarella. Yeah, it, it's called Extending Power BI with Python and R. This is the Bible of Power BI um, Python R um, integration. It is. It is a magnificent book. Um, I believe in February he's coming out with a new, a new edition of it. But if you're interested in this, I cannot recommend this, this highly enough. And the other thing that I'm seeing a lot of is that um, the Python community, even in cases where there were there were resources that were primarily R, and I'll give you a great example. Of this one, this is. Forecasting Practice and Principles by um, Rob Heinemann and uh, George Athanopoulos. And this is this is again kind of one of the standard bearer resources for time series forecasting. And 
Um, Rob, in particular, is a very, very active member of the R community. But the interesting thing is for all of his work, there's now a, a parallel Python um, archive. And so um, you know, it really it really is mattering less and less these days in terms of which one you work in. And as I say, the beauty of this integration is it calls and works exactly the same way. And I'll show you as we get as we get a little bit into the the chat GPT side of things. The other thing that I found is chat GPT does a marvelous job with um, with our with our uh, coding and also with Python that Python is it's in a sense it's native language for code interpreter and um, you know the advanced um, data analytics and so it actually it actually writes everything directly into Python and what I found is not being a Python user myself um, on Python R and the the quality of the translation in GPD-4 is pretty spectacular. And for, from all indications, um, what I'm hearing is GPD-5, the rumor is the training is done for that. And so yeah, I can only imagine how much better this is going to be when we get to, to GPD-5. But I'm going to show you some, some examples in a minute of... Um, uh, we have two yeah. more questions. Meanwhile, we got two more questions uh, sure. using R or Python. Uh, can induce problems with uh, the data gateways on personal mode, right? That and, uh, is that is true. Yeah, that that is that, and and I knew I knew somebody was going to bring it up because that is that is really the if there's if there's an Achilles heel to this, um, to this this whole integration approach, it is it is the reliance on the on the gateway at the moment but you know i think i really i don't have any i don't have any inside information on this but if you look at the the way that python in excel is handled it doesn't it, it's basically handled in the cloud and i know for example for r and i'll i'll, I'll show you this um i'll show you this online now there's a site called rd rd drr.io and if you're not if you're not an R user but you're interested what you can do is you can you can actually run your R code directly online and so yeah. um this is this is kind of the the kind of virtual cloud environment and they've got um in in RDRR they have got um Gosh, I want to say it's it's over a thousand packages. Yeah, over, okay, over nineteen thousand packages preloaded. So they basically Whoa. preloaded almost the entire CRAN library. And I have to think that um, this is the direction things are moving. In that, um, you know, the way Excel is implement implementing Python and the prevalence of these sorts of virtual environments. I tend to think the gateway problem is not going to be an issue um, relatively soon. I don't know if anybody has any any thoughts on that or any additional information, but um, when I see this and I see how smooth this works, um, you know, I can I can actually run enormously complex analyses on my phone through this, and um, you know, given the I speed. Scored. There is a good search button there because this was a, a question from me. How do you know what to use out of this? So many libraries. How do you know? How do you choose what to use? You know, uh, one, of the, one of the things here. I one of the things I do is um, is I, I actually I've actually gotten to the point I rely pretty heavily on on chat GPT to do my initial search. So um, let's just. Uh, Let's just say um, is the best library for analyzing prime numbers in R. Uh, you get a, a very good uh, head start with it. Yeah, yeah, and so you know it. Um, 
it will go through and, you know, in, in many cases, um, you'll find there are multiple packages, um, but just doing doing this and doing a search that that also in CRAN, there's a um, you can actually you can actually do it um, right through our studio, but there's there's some really good um, things in CRAN called vignettes and vignettes basically show you how the package implements um, certain analyses and certain visuals. And so um, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll run it through chat GPT and then I'll check the uh, the vignettes. But um, and the other the other thing that's really nice is with RDRR, you can. Instead of going and installing a bunch of packages in your in your installation, you can basically just try out the vignette code mm -hmm. right in RDR and see which one you like best. And then and then only install that because I, I would definitely say it was funny last night as I was as I was I was going through kind of cleaning up my uh, my installation that if you really um, if you really do a lot of analysis in here you can you can collect kind of in th this is this is my list of installed packages now and this Whoa. is this is kind of out of control and so yeah. you you generally don't want that many that many installed packages. So, um, you know, to kind of um, coordinate and kind of use packages that have a broader, um, broader applicability um, is a good thing. And then also running and testing in, in RDR.io. But um, anything you download from CRAN has gone through pretty intensive review. And um, I, I find the, the quality of the, the CRAN packages to be exceptional. Great. There are two more small questions, and then yeah. we should move forward. Um, integrating uh, R and Python in Power Query. Uh, do you can you do it in, uh, or is it? Have you tried it in a Microsoft Fabric with notebooks? Is it working? I have not. I really have not done much experimentation with Fabric, and so I don't unfortunately have a good answer for that one. Is Power Query in Excel, uh, able to run uh, R scripts or only in Power BI? Uh, Power Query in Excel is that is that the yeah. question? Yeah. Okay, so th this is this is a, a fairly complex question. Um, the answer is no, but um, that it doesn't have the ability to do it natively. But there's a package called BERT, and um, if you're if you're really um, if you're really committed to this, um, BERT is not the easiest thing to install or work with, but it does work. And so, and there's actually a BERT two out now. And so, if you really want to stay within the Excel environment and not do this in Power Query, you can you can actually do and call all the things I'm showing today through BERT, but it's it's a little bit wobbly. Um, you're you're stretching Excel pretty, pretty thin at that point. Yeah, I've just seen that uh, Python was released for Excel, so maybe that's a better option. So as as uh, usually, it depends on what you want to do, what your use case and everything, right? Yeah, but I think even with the Python integration, it doesn't it doesn't integrate quite in the same way that you can't at least my understanding at this point is you can't call the Python within um, the Power Query script in the same way using the data set call. But my guess is that that you know that that's probably coming to. Um, but at this point, what I'm going to show you, all the stuff I'm showing you is really only um, only doable within within Power Query and Power Power BI. Power Query in Power BI. Yes. And the, yes. There was another question uh, uh, in Spanish. I hope I understand it. Can PySpark uh, uh, can PySpark do the same thing uh, uh, inside Power BI? Have you tried it? Do you know about it? Um, you know that that's I I I do know I do know a little bit about it. Um, but I don't know I. I, I don't know about running that within within Power BI. I don't know if there's anybody who's a who's a real Python um, aficionado on the 
on the chat who could answer that one, but um, that I don't know. But I do know um, that some of the PySpark and some of the other um, some of the other capabilities are meant for really large data sets, and that is one thing that um, that definitely also also applies to R in the sense that um, I tend to do most of my data cleaning in um, Power Query and M, and then pull um, R in basically toward the end in in that that R script data set call. But the other thing you can do is you can actually invoke R almost right off the bat and do your your data modeling and data cleaning within R. And that is is actually very useful for really large data sets. Um, so Luca in, in his book that I mentioned has a whole chapter on basically using using kind of R and Python within Power BI for large scale data analysis. And so if that's if that's something, you know, particularly if you're working on large machine learning models, um, that is that is a potentially a very good option if you want to stay still within the Power BI environment. Cool, thank you. We are uh, up to date with the questions. Let's move okay, forward. Okay, great, great. Um, so the next thing I want to show, I, I had when when we were chatting about when I put the initial um, when I put the initial um, advertisement for this session out, um, one of the things somebody asked is. Can you do um, can you do wildcard text searches? Um, and this is this is something that um, that I, I was really interested in putting a little a little demo together. I don't know if anybody online is a Wordle fan. Um, Wordle is a it's a daily game in the New York Times. It's a word puzzle game, and um, and you basically have to guess. You have to guess a five letter word and it tells you kind of where your guess is correct, but not in the correct place or whether you have a letter in the correct place. And so what I did in terms of thinking about this, this question of um, this question of wildcard searches, I wanted to show um, kind of a Wordle example. And what I what I did is I took and, and downloaded um, about 3,000, there's a library of about three or 4,000 um, five letter words. And so I took that and basically, um, you know, then made a, a parameter in, in Power Query um, and then turned that into a function. And so what I wanted to show is kind of how you can, you can kind of add to the capabilities of, of Power Query beyond just kind of, you know, simple, simple functions. You can, you know, simple, um, you know, things like the prime function or the binary, the decimal, um, you can kind of add whole integrated capabilities into it. And so what, what this does is this just basically captures a search string from the user. Um, it then adds that that search string to the table and this is a really important point because um in the data set call the one thing one of the things that it's limited to is it has no knowledge of anything that's happened in in power be in power query before that data set call that basically it it only knows the exact prior step and so in this case, what I've got is I've got a variable created that is the search string variable. If I if I then go into the headers step and then call the Power Query script, um, it doesn't have any knowledge of that search string variable. And it won't help me to put that as the, the prior step because then it's going to just bring that single value in. So what I have to do if I want to kind of bring something in from the earlier environment is to include that in the table. And so in this case, what I could have done is I could have appended it as you know, the last record to the table. In this case, I just appended it as a column. And so if we look at the at the R script here, this one's a little bit, this is a little bit more complex. And basically what I've got here is a library called Stringer. And um, 
I want to just show you real briefly um, in our studio, there is an amazing resource that if you go to help and then you say cheat sheets um, and then browse cheat sheets, what this will do, this will take you to a library of um, Posit, which is the company that makes our studio. And they have they've put together this unbelievable library of really some of the best cheat sheets I've ever seen. And um, the one that the one that we're going to be using for string manipulation is called Stringer. And if you click on this, um, what they've got is they've got this remarkable two page cheat sheet. Um, I think I actually double click on it. Yeah, and so so basically you can download this and um save image of this. And the 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 cheat sheets that Posit puts together are absolutely incredible. So you can basically learn a package, an R package, in pretty good depth just with these with these cheat sheets. And so for Stringer, this has this has really incredible capabilities for um, string manipulation. I'm going to show you in the next the next example, also for regex for regular expressions um, for data cleaning. It is it is incredible. And so what we've done here is we've loaded the stringer library and then we've just taken you know our, our standard data set command and loaded that into, into the DF variable. And now what we're doing is we're basically saying, OK, let's let's take that search string and take the the first value off of the the second column. And then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to run that. We're going to run that search thing through a, a pattern match that it, that it creates based on the regex string. And what this does is if we go into. Um, I can show you. OK, so what it'll do is is it'll take the results and everything that comes out of an R script comes out as a table. Um, so in R, it's called data frame. Um, in Power Query, it's called a table. And in this case, we just have one. We have one table. And if we expand this out, what we'll see is. We will see everything that matches the um, the wildcard search that we put in, but let me let me show you this. So if we guess, if we guess here, and let's let's change this guess to um, like a star star p star. Let's say that was our that was our guess, and that's what came up in our in our first um, in our first first word. I'll try, and then if we go here, what we'll see is. Out of the the R script comes two tables. We filter that down because the first table is just a, a mirror of the data frame that went in the data set. And then we expand that out. What we what we've got here is we've got everything that matches that regex pattern. So A blank blank P blank. These are all the five letter words that match. And what I wanted to show in this is kind of the the ease of jumping in and out of, of R and Power Query. So what we can do is we can run this this pattern match and then we we can go in and in this um, in the advanced editor, what we've done here is now we've got this check removal script and I can blow this up a bit. And what this is doing is saying, OK, let's let's do a second screen on that on that match. By basically, if we if we jump back to the results here, um, what we've got is we guessed A and P, but there there are some words here that had a second A or maybe a second P in there, and those would have shown up in the in the guess. So we know in some sense if it's A blank blank p blank that it can't be adapt 
and it can't be um, agape. And so what we do is we run this this additional check removal, and you'll see that it it then processes that down further to only the only the ones that are consistent both with the pattern match and the rules of the game. And so we could have built that into the regex, but I just I didn't do that just because I want to show how easy it is to kind of jump in and out um, of Power Query and, and R. And the interesting thing is you can even mix if you wanted to. You could you could say run this as an R script, come out of the data frame, and then have this this check removal step be a Python script. There's there's no there's no problem mixing and matching if you want to do that. And so the next thing I want to show is um, an example. So this is one that um, and I'll probably show. Let me show the um, the original text file on this. So this is this is an actual Apache um, log, and you can see this is this is just a mess. Um, you know, if if you're if you're downloading this and trying to make make sense of it, you know, there's there's just there's just a lot here, and it's not it's not entirely consistent in in, in the length of um, of strings. And so this this comes into Power Query as as one string, and you could you could potentially um, try to basically split this out in Power Query, and I've done it, and it's not. It's not terrible, you know. You can you can get to a good result in this, but I want to show you how easy this is and really where ChatGPT um, really comes into the game in this. In that, um, what we can do is we can run run an R script that is, again, this is this a little bit a little bit heavier duty than what we've been talking about, but then what it'll do is it'll go, it'll run, and what I I'll show you the results and then I want to recreate this in real time and show you how simple this actually is. And then we expand the table, we filter out the nulls, and now we've got kind of this beautifully cleaned um, data set that knows, okay, URL, HTTP version, status code. It knows exactly what the the components of this of this Apache log were. And we didn't have to do any of that. And so what I wanted to do was was to show you kind of how that how that could work. So let's let's take this and let's let's basically delete from from this from this column on, and let's try to let's try to build this out on the fly. Um, so here's the full string. And so what we want to do is we want to go to transform, and we want to run. In our script, and we'll get this empty box. And so, what we want to do now is we want to jump out to um, to Code Interpreter. And I don't know how many how many folks have played around with with this yet, but it is it is remarkable and getting better by the day. And so, um, let me let me just start this completely a new completely new chat. Um, and what what you do for code interpreter is you upload a data set. And so one of the things that I use um, that is is really great, and it's it's kind of a critical tool for this sort of integration is um, Bravo. And um, this is a tool developed by SQL BI. And what it lets you do is the thing I use it for most, I mean, it's got a lot of other functionality. but what i what I typically use it for, is in this integration, if you want to take your information and put it out to um, to Code Interpreter or to R Studio for that matter, um, just gonna get to the. All right, here we go. So get to the external tools, and then we go to Bravo. I'm using it also for all kind of things, and just like tabular editor, there are so many more that uh, I'm not using. 
Right, right. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful tool and it's, the interface is beautiful. And so what you can do is you can take and you click on this and then just say export as and export as uh, CSV. And you just click on that and it, it just pumps it right out to to a CSV file. And so what we can do now is we can we can take in in code interpreter and let me make sure I'm running the right the right version here and we hit this plus sign and what we can now do is we can take that apache logs and upload it to code interpreter and th this is just i was i was talking to, to christian last night this to me still just seems like witchcraft um <laughs> so if we if we say okay now let's um we've uploaded so what i want to say is um is create an R script using stringer to create an R script using stringer with a regex to move this window. Where's the uploaded Apache log? And so I've I have some some custom instructions in um, in ChatGPT that basically tell it I like how I like my uh, my output to to be, and I don't want it to pause, and I want it to respond using using R and using these libraries. And so what this what this does, this is just banging out the R the R regex code here. And it, it does so in a really nice way that it um what I also have is some some um instructions about kind of maximum readability. And so it will it will often put the inline comments directly into the into the script. And so it's it's basically saying okay here's how I'm going to break break this down and now what we can do is we can copy this code and this is where I pray to the demo gods a little bit um, and we go here to transform run our script and they'll just say you know data set holds the the input for the script we paste that in, um, and now this is this is basically this is the one statement that you've got to um, you've got to change, which is it's it says take the Apache log into a data frame, and what it's doing is it's reading the CSV that I uploaded. So we want to take this statement out, and basically just say again data set. So it's written the it's written the um, the R code as if log data is now the the place where the main data is housed. So you just want to feed your data set command into that log data. And now this should, fingers crossed, this should this should actually run. Boom. And that's how quick it is. And so oh. the log the log data is just that's the the table that we input. So what we want to do, we don't want to expand that. So we want to take that off the filter. And what we've got now is this parsed logs table. And let's expand that. And if all works well, yeah, we've now, uh, yeah, we've now got we've now got a beautiful implementation of the parsing of this um, of this table. I don't know why the oh. It might still be uh, it might still be updating this. But basically what we've got now is we've got we've got this all parsed out in with the the columns named. It knows exactly what those what those columns are. And now if we wanted to, what we could do is we could um, we could take and you know do some additional work here. So for example, on date time, we could we could now split this out um, in Power Query and do some 
some additional work on it. But I think that what that shows is you you have tremendous access both through the package um, libraries and through the capabilities of ChatGPT. Um, so what what it can do here is you can you can say okay, um, give me a detailed explanation. Of the regex code use and so even if you're not even if you're not very familiar with regex what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to walk you through and show you exactly what that code is doing and there are ways there are some great there's a there's a site called regex 101 that um has great resources for explaining what regex commands do and how they work and it's also got some really good online tools very similar to rdrr in terms of what you can do to validate your regex code and um, if you're interested in this it is it is a remarkable tool even though regex was was gener was developed in the 1950s it's really really stood the test of time and it um it gives you kind of logical data cleaning capabilities that are far beyond even what you've got in, in Power Query. And so the combination of these two is is really one of the most powerful data cleaning um, capabilities I've ever seen. And there's a um, there's another great book called um, Regular Expressions Cookbook. And what this does is it walks through a whole bunch of of common cases um, for you know, parsing emails, parsing phone numbers, um, social security numbers, um, log files, all with examples. And so the combination of that, your cheat sheet and um, chat GPT um, really gives you kind of incredible power in this. And so um, at this point, I, I've got some other examples, but I wanted to I wanted to take a a brief pause and see if we've got some questions on the chat. No questions uh, up until now, and uh, uh, I think everybody is uh, just uh, wowed about uh, how everything works combining Power Query, R, ChatGPT, and uh, how much stuff you can do with it. And that really, that that is still, you know, even though I've been been doing this for a while, every day that, that I come to this and am able to do something really quickly that would have normally taken an enormous amount of time. I mean, you know, there, there are kind of, there's a, there's a very funny quote that you'll hear a lot with regard to regex, which is, if you have a problem that needs to be solved with regex, now you've got two problems. Um, <laughs> and, you know, even among, even among people who are, who are quite strong programmers, regex is just a, is a tough thing to do on your own. And the ability that chat GPT has now to really bang out really reliable regex code is remarkable. And so, you know, it's really kind of taken that as a as a tool for experts and brought it to every data analyst out there. And, you know, the other thing that I wanted to show is um, I want to show some reports I've done from a statistics standpoint. And this is really where um, this again is where the Power BI R integration just shines. Um, this is the kind of thing that um, this is analysis I did just using my I posted last night on Shield, which is a program that if you're a heavy LinkedIn user, it provides you with a lot of data and capabilities on your on your feed. And what you can do is you can download all of your data from Shield um, into Power BI and then analyze that data. And so what I wanted to do for this one was I want to say, OK, is there is there a better and are there better and worse days to post um, content on LinkedIn? And you know, you can you can kind of look at this. You can you can run it in a um, you know you can you can run it in a um, in a box plot, and it's not really clear how you know what this tells you that you know there's there's definitely some variation. You've got some you've got some pretty strong outliers. Um, you look at the the means and the uh, the medians, and it's it's not really clear 
And there, there's no way you could tell, even if you can spot some differences, whether those differences are statistically significant or not. And so what I did, what I did on this was actually a, a pretty complex analysis um, that I looked at the data. The data was not normally distributed by any stretch. And um, so instead of, you know, kind of the normal tests that you could, you could theoretically run Excel or Power BI, this required some non-parametric statistics, which would normally be, you know, fairly arduous to run. But, you know, again, in R, um, by calling, by calling script here, what I was able to do was to take all that, all that work and just, if we go um, here in the statistics. Could you please zoom a bit? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, let me, let me zoom in. Uh, Yeah, much better. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so basically, you know, I, I kind of clean my clean my data, um, and then jumped into you know a pretty hefty R script here with a lot of a lot of packages, and basically running some some normality tests, running some non-parametrics, and then when you run the non-parametrics, you then have um, some additional pairwise tests you have to run, and it then spits all this out into into this big statistics table. And the interesting thing here, and this is this is going to get to, you know, kind of a, a slightly more complex best practice, which is when you're doing statistics in Power BI using the R Python integration, there are going to be some tests that run and produce really clean output. And in in power in in R, there's a program called Sweep, uh, a, a package called Sweep, um, or a, a command called Sweep in a package called Broom. And what that does is that basically takes all of your statistical results and sweeps them into a really nice clean data frame that has you know kind of standard standard headings to it. Now there's there's a um, there's there's a term I've kind of I've kind of coined for my own work here, which um, I call um, let me find I call extracting the hostages, um, which is in in the the integration because everything has to basically come in and out of the data frame. The um, the ones that run that really clean output that goes into broom, those come out perfectly. The problem is that not every statistical test you run produces that nice clean output. And so this is where you have to go in basically and you've got you've got data that is really valuable in R that you need to pull into Power BI. And what you need to do is what they call coerce this into a compatible data frame. And what that is basically, just some just some additional steps, and this is where again, Code Interpreter can be really really helpful. If you if you upload a a CSV of what you've got and say, okay, how do I get this into a data frame that I can read in in Power BI? It will often write the code for you to get that to get that information out into into a table you can use. And so if we go. If we go back to um, Power Query here, I just want to show you this because this is this is something that w the first time you see it, you're going to be like, I don't know what to do with this. Um, yeah, so here we go. So what you've got here is you've got Power. The, the R integration will spit out all your results. So the Duns test, the normality tests, what I call the cruise call Wallace tests here, it spits them all out into kind of one appended data table. And this is where you've got to basically take and do a little bit of, of Power Query work on the back end, which is to, to 
basically split those out into separate tables and process those differently. So I basically take that statistics table, split it to the DUNS table, and then split it out to, to then my other test results that that coerce nicely into that into that sweep format. And so you you often have a little bit of extra work to get that information out in usable form that you can then you can then take into individuals. And so once we've got that kind of into in the tables that are, you know, this Dunn's test table and then the test results table, we can then build our our Power Query visuals in a way that I think is is really, you know, kind of intuitive and attractive and you know kind of puts all the all the hard work behind the scenes. And the other thing that's nice is you can also basically use that integration to build visuals like for example this QQ plot that shows deviations from from a normal distribution. This is not something that that Power BI does natively. And so this is this is run from again from another R script that creates that QQ plot visual in in R and then outputs it to to Power BI. So that is, you know, that is just kind of a a brief run through of kind of the types of things you can do. Um, if I had more time, I'd show you there there's some some machine learning I did with um, Gustav Dudek on basically some um, logistic regression um, machine learning that we did um, on a data challenge. Um, you can do um, web scraping. You can do Monte Carlo simulation. You are really just completely you you are analytics Godzilla kind of tramping you know trampling the city you know kind of unconstrained that there's there's really nothing when you've got this this tool set that you you can't now do in Power BI combined with these with these other tools and you know the, the other thing I'll show is that even if you're not um, really kind of deeply in, involved with you know statistics you can basically you know kind of in in plain language if you if you put a a csv in you can basically say okay um you know how would i test the difference between two Different groups of patients in a substance abuse treatment program. And this is this is the um this is the analysis that Gustav and I did. And what it'll do is it'll then show you it'll it'll kind of It'll talk through kind of how you do this, and then it'll talk through the statistical methods. I'll just let this let this finish up. And so it's you know it's really going through kind of a detailed. You know, and this is this is actually what we did post hoc tests with the uh, the two key post hoc correction. That's actually that Dunn's test that I showed you. Um, that's very similar to what we did. And so, you know, it's going through you know kind of an extensive analysis, and then you can say, okay, give me the Python code to run the um, let's pick a. Whitney U test. And you can you can actually get it to show show its work as it's going through this. And this still, you know, this still obviously requires, you know, kind of a fundamental background knowledge of you know statistics and choosing the right test, but 
the amazing thing to me is you no longer really need to know how to program any of this. That, you know, between the R packages and the the coding that's done in um, Code Interpreter, you can now take copy this code in and put that in your in your integration with the data set call and you basically have now advanced statistical capability and so you know i've done this with machine learning um you know kind of the the ability to explore analytical approaches that you've never tried before is is really remarkable and you know as i was kind of thinking about this last night you know kind of the the journey i've come from you know back in the 80s when i started doing this where each each of these analyses would take about 17 hours to run and you would run it and your code would be wrong and it would take another 17 hours. And the ability now to sit here and basically have the computer write the code and have it run almost instantaneously is just, it seems like magic to me. And so, you know, I hope um, this is kind it of did. sparked. It is magic, yeah. to, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, uh, only comments of amazement that I see. You know, and so I, I really, you know, I, this is just, you know, I could I could spend another, you know, four or five hours here and still not show you, you know, kind of all the, the neat things this can do. But, um, you know, I hope it sparked some, you know, some thinking and some, um, some desire to kind of explore on your own and, you know, really start playing with these tools. And, you know, I, I've been really thrilled to see on LinkedIn, you know the um, the amount of content that's come out with regard to Python and Excel. You know it seems like it's really energized the community to really dive into Python, and um, I I just wanted to you know really encourage folks who, if you haven't played around with these and and there there are you know it's not perfect you know the the gateway issue is still an issue, um, but the the capabilities this 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 gives you is is really just kind of beyond beyond belief and so you know at this point i just wanted to, you know, i hope that's i hope that's been helpful i hope it's maybe shown you some things you hadn't seen before um but more than anything it just you know it it just kind of is is an amazing new world that we're living in and um you know i i want to i want to really shout out um you know enterprise dna and sam mckay in particular because he has really embraced this wholeheartedly. You know, I, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of folks that are kind of, you know, is AI going to take my job? You know, is AI going to replace me? And there are cases. I mean, that you know, I, I think you know, there was a huge um, thing this week about you know the translators for one of the um, the online blogs being replaced by AI, and you know, it definitely has that threat. But I, I really feel that for the analysts who embrace this and really learn to use it and, you know, kind of have it enhance your capabilities that you only you only get stronger, not weaker because of it. And, you know, Sam exactly. has really em embraced that mentality. And, um, you know, I think to me, it's like I just feel like I now have superpowers, you know, that the things I can do that I've never you know, been able to do or been able to do only slowly that I can now do in in the blink of an eye is really amazing. And Sam's done some great work, and I really encourage you to check out um, the site if you haven't been lately. Um, he's really diving deep into the integration with Code Interpreter, and so um, really just wanted I to saw thank some really good courses on AI and the entire rebranding of enterprise DNA with AI and the. You're right. It's it's a total different thing when you combine everything. You have so much more power. Yeah, yeah. It just it, it it's it's more power, and even for the things you know how to do, your ability to do them so much faster. And I've 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 got some I've got some interesting. Um, you know, I know we're I know we're coming down to the the end. I just want to highlight a couple of things that I've I've put up on my on my LinkedIn um, page. That I think are really um, are really useful in this. Um, yeah, Christy already shared uh, some of the links uh, uh, oh, with I, your I, blogs. I think, I think on, I'm not, I'm not uh, on the chat. 
Can I share? Let me just real quick share mm -hmm. screen and just show you real quickly a couple of things because I've I've been doing some some pretty deep dives into you know how good is AI and code interpreter at particular tasks that we as as Power BI users do regularly, and so kind of featured in in my profile here is. Um, you know, I've got one on, you know, kind of using it to create automated data dictionaries. Um, there's another in terms of. Um, in terms of how does it do in data cleaning? And what I did is I, I basically ran um, chat GPT up against some of VJ's toughest um, challenges in the nightly Excel BI challenge and. It wasn't perfect, and M code is definitely one of those things that is lagging a little behind SQL and and Python and R, but it did quite well. And here is another one where I um, I just squared off in data visualization analysis, and um, it it basically played me played me to a draw. I've been doing this for thirty <laughs> years, and it, it's still in beta, and it played me to a draw, and um, and it did it a whole lot faster than I did. And so, you know, really would encourage you if you if you've not um, really dived headlong into this to to really take some time and do that because I think it is just really changing the way we all work and do business. So, um, with that, I wanted to just thank Christian and Christian for the invite. Um, as I, I could I could talk all day about this. It, it's it's really kind of remarkable times that we're living in. And so. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And um, I don't know if we have time for a few questions or at this point, I guess yeah. you want to do the drawing. There was a comment uh, mostly which is related to the uh, needed basic uh, statistic uh, knowledge needed for a Power BI developer so we, we can integrate everything. And uh, there was a question uh, in the end. Uh, uh, about the, can you please elaborate on the gateway issue, the uh, caveat, caveat, the the LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn, the power, the gateway. Yeah, yeah, and so to update your data, so R and Python. My understanding, and this is not my, you know, the the kind of data architecture is not my strong suit, but that all runs locally, and so. In order to in order to update your data and have it be have it be dynamic, um, it needs to pass through a personal gateway. Um, so you've got the the R and Python processing done on the on the local computer, and then syncing that with the the report on the service. As I say, I think that is the technology definitely exists to get around that. It's just. It's, I think, a matter of you know Power BI team kind of prioritizing that over you know some of the the other things. Um, so yeah, to to basically do this in an in analysis where it's going to be changing, you know, where your data is going to be changing, and you're going to want to be rerunning the statistical or machine learning analyses. Um, that is still an issue where you need that that personal gateway to do that. Um, one of the things for me that makes that not as huge a deal is many of the statistical analyses I'm doing are not the kind of things like a, a financial analysis where you're going to be running them every day. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of asking bigger, broader questions about your data, and you may want to run those on a you know quarterly basis, but it's not the kind of thing where you're you know you're looking at a moving average over you know hours, days, or weeks. And so the gateway issue for me has not been a real deal breaker, but um, that is that is it is a downside. Yes. Oh, uh, we got some uh, help from uh, some of the attendees uh, sharing links and uh, 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 some additional details on the gateways and the gateway issue. And uh, there is one more question from question from Young. Would integration Power BI with Copilot make more sense than uh, with ChatGPT? You know, I mean, the only thing I've seen on Copilot is the three minute video that everybody else has seen. Um, it looks great, but, you know, 
to me, it's still vaporware. Um, yeah, I guess there are about 600 people who have have seen it in, you know, kind of large enterprise corporate um, demos. I don't know, Christian, I don't know whether as an MVP you have or even if you could say if you have or not. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know, honestly. Um, I got to tell you that they are going to have they're going to have a tough time meeting the quality of what um, code interpreter can do. Um, code cool. interpreter is is really incredible, and the the leaps it made from version three point five to version four are pretty remarkable. And I think when it gets from version four to version five, I am really I think we're really going to be in a situation where um, it's not going to be that long before. AI is going to be a better programmer than any human programmer. And, um, you know, it's already solving, even in, in version four, it's solving some five star problems that very few people in the community got right. And so, um, you know, could Copilot be a better integration? It, it certainly could, but I think it's it's got a high bar to clear. Well, to be honest, after build, when uh, we saw publicly that Microsoft is going, heads first into AI and then knowing that they are part of the open AI and uh, they are they have invested a lot in chat GPT and code interpreter, I'm pretty sure uh, in the end they will be more or less the same. That would be great. You know, if that if that's well, where if that's where it's headed, then then I think I think that that is nothing but good for Power BI users. Um, I'm I'm eager to see it. You know, I, I really, you know, to have, it, to have it directly integrated into Power BI and not have to worry about these, you know, these these kind of integration steps would be incredible. Yeah, true. Well, there are no more questions, and uh, this is the the moment when we can ask Brian any other question, and then we can move quickly to the Enterprise DNA raffle. Uh, code interpreter is not available through an API, right? Uh, question from Nikos. I think um, it is. I think it is now. I, I, I do believe it is. Yeah, me um, too. Now, the one thing, the one thing is, I, I'm, I'm actually almost positive it is, but the, the thing I, I'm pretty sure about is if it goes, there, there, there are certain types of commands that if they go through the API, they're not yet sandboxed privately. That I know, for example, I did one on, um, I trained my Obsidian Vault on uh, ChatGPT, and the way it vectorizes the, um, the information going through the API, it does not protect that from um, OpenAI having having um, access to it. Now, I do know that the enterprise version came out last week, and um, that supposedly has like complete privacy protection. Um, so I would just say, remain careful in the interim. Yeah. There are no more questions, uh, only uh, thank yous and uh, good words. So thank you. And uh, we should move quickly to the raffle yeah. and then come back for the wrap up, right? Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, it should be visible. It is. So up until, uh, I don't know, five minutes ago, we had 21 participants in the raffle with 24 answers on the Microsoft form. As we are a, a Power BI and the Excel user group, I'm using Power BI. This is the Power BI report where I get all my data from a SharePoint, where I'm writing the data from the form with a Power Automate. So it's pretty um, easy setup. And um, if you want to learn how to do it, uh, I did present it in a Enterprise DNA uh, summit that uh, Brian organized uh, last year. If you are a member, you have access to all the recordings. So uh, if you are in the raffle and you are a lucky winner, we'll see. So let's make sure we have the latest data. So if, let's refresh the report. As I can see, we were very, very international today. So India, South Africa, Nigeria, Canada, US, Mexico, 
Ecuador, a very international participation, and uh, this is all thanks to you, Brian. And uh, hopefully, you will all come next time also. Uh, if you learn Romanian next week, or if you know Romanian, <laughs> if not on the English sessions. And uh, let's get the data, of course, the entire data uh, for the raffle is done using Power Query in Power BI. So let's refresh the preview. Yes, the 22 participants are here. And I'm using the wheel of names from the web. Let's paste all the participants. Shuffle the names. And drum roll for the first winner. Ernosh from Canada. Congrats, you are the first winner. Let's see the second winner. Shuffle again. And turn the wheel. Craig from UK. Congrats, you are the second winner. I will contact you after the meetup to um, uh, let you know how to. Um, uh, get the license and uh, everything to confirm your email address. Thank, thank you all for joining and uh, thank you, Brian, again, for taking the time to present to our user group. You are welcome anytime to, to come and uh, present more. Hopefully, we'll meet again next year at Ropa and live if it's possible. And uh, looking, forward, looking forward to uh, See your next posts on LinkedIn and uh, see what are you working on, the blog and the uh, uh, book. Uh, will you share any details about it soon? I, I will be saying, yeah, we're, we're working on we're working on rolling out some some initial initial marketing materials and uh, should be a, should be an announcement coming out soon. Um, positive that uh, it will be really, really good content there. If just like every other uh, content that you put publicly for the community on uh, on LinkedIn. Thank you again, Brian. Thank you everyone for joining and uh, see you on our next meetups.